Hello students, welcome to Read Med Prep Academy channel. Today in Molecular Genetics Part 3, we are going to talk about properties of genetic material and the packaging of the DNA helix. The experiment by Hershey and Chase by the bacteriophages on the E. coli clearly indicates that it is the DNA, the deoxyribonucleic acid that acts as the genetic material. However, in some viruses like tobacco mosaic virus, the TMV, bacteriophage, Tita B, RNA acts as the genetic material. What are the differences between the RNA and the DNA? RNA is a single standard except in some viruses, whereas DNA is a double standard except in few viruses. RNA has ribose sugar, DNA has deoxyribose sugar. Bases are present like adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracil in RNA. Whereas the bases in DNA are adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. Adenine pairs with uracil. In DNA, adenine pairs with thymine. Purine is not equal to pyrimidine. In DNA, purine is equal to pyrimidine according to Shargaff's rule. Regions having complementary nucleotides, pairs and form hairpin loop like structure and helical. Complementary nucleotides are present throughout the length of the DNA. RNA is the genetic material in some viruses. DNA is the genetic material in all living organisms. The length of RNA is short, consisting of only few thousand nucleotides. The length of DNA is quite large, consisting of millions of nucleotides. Three types of RNA are present in an organism. The messenger RNA called the mRNA, the ribosomal RNA called the rRNA and the transfer RNA mentioned as tRNA. DNA occurs only in one form in an organism. Messenger RNA occurs in the nucleolus, the ribosomal RNA and the transfer RNA occur in the cytoplasm. DNA occurs only in the nucleus, the nucleolus and the extra-chromosomal DNA occurs in the mitochondria and the chloroplast. Now, what are the properties of the genetic material, whether it be the DNA or the RNA? It should have self-replication capacity, it should have stability, it should have the ability of information storage and the variation through mutation. Let us go one by one. Self-replication, it should be able to replicate. According to the rule of the base pairing and complementarity, both nucleic acids DNA and RNA have the ability to do direct duplications. The proteins fail to fulfill this criteria. Here we can see a DNA molecule, one strand being from 5' dash to 3' dash, and the another strand 3' dash to 5' dash unwinds itself from below. And here a new strand is formed in the opposite direction. Now, what is the stability of the genetic material? It should be stable structurally and chemically. The genetic material should be stable enough not to change with different stages of life cycle, age, or with change in physiology of the organism. Stability is one of the property of the genetic material. This was clearly evident in Griffith's transforming principle on experiments with the mouse. Heat which killed the bacteria did not destroy some of the properties of the genetic material. In the DNA, the two strands being complemented to each other, on heating, they undergo denaturation. They separate together. On cooling, when appropriate condition is provided, they again wind. That is called renaturation. Here you can see a double helix DNA molecule on heating, slowly unwinds. When more heat is provided, the two strands separate with each other. When cooling is done, again these strands wind and form the double helix structure by denaturation. So the RNA is unstable. Why RNA is unstable? Because of the two dash hydroxyl group present at every nucleotide in the RNA is a reactive group that makes RNA liable and easily degradable. RNA is also known to be catalytic and reactive. The DNA is stable chemically and chemically less reactive when compared to RNA. 
the presence of thymine instead of uracil in DNA confirms additional stability to the DNA. Now comparing the stability between the DNA and RNA, DNA molecule is very stable molecule. It does not destroy even on heating. Very reactive molecule is the RNA and it is unstable. The stability of DNA is because of the presence of thymine. The RNA is unstable because of the presence of uracil. Now, the genetic material should have the ability of information storage. It should be able to express itself in the form of Mendelian characters. RNA can directly code for the protein synthesis and can easily express the characters. DNA, however, depends on RNA for the synthesis of proteins. Both DNA and RNA can act as a genetic material. But DNA being more stable stores the genetic information whereas RNA transfers the genetic information of the DNA. Here we can see the functions of the nucleic acids. As a genetic material stores the information in the form of genes. And it causes a blueprint for building the proteins. DNA is transcripted into RNA and RNA is translated into proteins. It also helps in the transfer of information and forms the blueprint for the new cells. It forms a blueprint for the new generation. Now, the genetic material should also undergo mutation. It should be able to mutate. Both DNA and RNA are able to mutate. RNA being unstable, it mutates at a faster rate. Which mutates faster? Viruses having the RNA genome, shorter lifespan, can mutate and evolve faster. RNA and DNA function as the genetic material. DNA is more stable and is preferred for storage of the genetic information. What are the types of mutations that can occur? Missense mutation. Mutation changes type of protein made. Nonsense mutation. Mutation causes premature stop in the translation. Silent mutation. Changes basis but has no effect on protein made. Point mutation where the change one base along the DNA sequence. The point mutation can be substitution, insertion or deletion. In substitution, one base is replaced with a different one. In the insertion, one extra base is added. In deletion, one base is removed from the sequence. Now, any insertion or deletion mutations which shift the bases, changing the amino acid sequence, resulting in the altered formation of the protein. Here you can see, a normal sequence of DNA, CGT, GTA, CGT. When it is transcribed into the messenger RNA, it forms GCA, which forms the amino acid arginine, CAU, which forms the amino acid histidine, GCA, which forms the amino acid alanine. When the mutation occurs in one nitrogenous basis, for example, CGT, and the G is replaced by A, ATA and CGT. The complementary transcription of the messenger RNA results in the formation of GCA which forms arginine and ATA is transcribed into UAU. This results in the formation of the amino acid tyrosine and the CGT is transcribed as GCA which results in the formation of amino acid alanine. And the normal sequence of amino acid as a polypeptide is arginine, histidine and alanine. Because of the mutation, instead of histidine, there is tyrosine. So the amino acid polypeptide will have arginine, tyrosine and alanine. This results in the formation of altered protein. Now let us move on to the packaging of DNA helix. The distance between the two consecutive base pairs is 0.34 nanometers. That means 0.34 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meters of the DNA double helix in a typical mammalian cell. Here you can see a double helix. The distance between the base pairs is 0.34 nanometers. The distance of one spiral is 3.4 nanometers. The thickness of the DNA molecule is 2 nanometers. When the total number of the base pairs is multiplied with the distance between the two consecutive base pairs, the length of the DNA molecule can be arrived. For example, the, the distance between the two base pairs is 0 0.34 to 20 to the power of minus 9 meters. And the 
total number of base pairs is 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power of 9. When these both are multiplied, the length of the DNA molecule in a mammalian DNA is approximately 2.2 meters. So how to calculate the double helix length. The total length of the double helix DNA is equal to the total number of the base pairs into the distance between the two consecutive base pairs. For example, you take E. coli. The DNA of E. coli is 1.36 millimeter. The number of base pairs in E. coli is 4 into 10 to the power of 6 base pairs. That is 1.36 into 10 to the power of 3 meters divided by 0 0.34 into 10 to the power of minus 9. So the distance between the two consecutive base pairs in a double helix DNA is 0 0.34 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meters. The total length of double helix DNA in an organism can be calculated by multiplying the total number of base pairs with the distance between the two consecutive base pairs. So the total length of double helix DNA is equal to total number of base pairs into distance between the two consecutive base pairs. For example, if you consider the E. coli, the length is 1.36 millimeter and X is considered as the total number of base pairs. And the distance between the two consecutive base pairs is 0 0.34 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meters. By solving this, we get x is equal to 4 into 10 to the power of 6 base pairs. So the number of base pairs in a DNA of E. coli of 1.36 millimeter length is 4 into 10 to the power of 6 base pairs. Now, the length of the DNA double helix is far greater than the dimension of a typical mammalian nucleus, approximately 10 to the power of minus 6 meters. So how is the DNA polymer packed in a cell? Chromosomes are carriers of genes which are responsible for various characters from generation to generation. Du Pro in 1965 proposed a single standard model called the unineme as a long coil molecule which is associated with the histone proteins in eukaryotes. Here you can see the folded fiber model of the chromosome where the chromatids contain the nicely folded DNA. The folded DNA in the plants and animals have more DNA than the bacteria and they must fold this DNA to fit into the cell nucleus. Here you can see the DNA molecule which is double helix is bounded as octomers by the histone proteins and these histone proteins form the nucleosomes and the nucleosomes are then made into the chromatins and the chromatin molecule is bound into the chromosome and kept in the nucleus. In prokaryotes such as E. coli, they do not have definite nucleus. The DNA is scattered throughout the cell. The DNA is being negatively charged and is held with some proteins that have positive charges. Where they are present? They are present in a region called nucleoid. Here you can see the central region where the DNA exists is called the nucleoid. The DNA as a nucleoid is organized into large loops held by protein and these loops are usually circular. What is a genophore? DNA of prokaryotes is almost circular and lacks chromatin and the organization of such structure is called the genophore. Here you can see the plasmid on one side which is a circular DNA and the genophore which is present in the nucleoid. DNA in eukaryotes. In eukaryotes it's a very complex organization. So chromatin is formed by a series of repeating units called the nucleosomes. So Kornberg proposed a model for a nucleosome in which two molecules of four histone proteins. The histone proteins are H2A H2B, H3 and H4. They are organized to form a unit of 8 molecules. This is called histone octomere. Here you can see how the histone octomere is formed. H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. All these are histone proteins of one set and another set. Another molecule forms the core around this the DNA winds around and you have the histone 1 protein for linkage and they have a linker DNA. 
to join along with the next octomere. The negatively charged DNA is wrapped around the positively charged histone octomere to form a structure called nucleosome. A typical nucleosome contains 200 base pairs of DNA helix. The histone octomeres are in closed contact and the DNA is coiled on the outside of the nucleosome. Here you can see the formation of a nucleosome, how the eight histone molecules and the DNA is wound around the histone molecule and the H1 histone which links the DNA molecules. Neighboring nucleosomes are connected by linker DNA. The linker DNA is nothing but the histone protein 1 that is exposed to enzymes. The DNA makes two complete turns around the histone octomeres and the two turns are sealed off by an H1 molecule. Here you can see how the histone octomeres are linked by the linker DNA. The chromatin lacking region of H1 appears as a beads on a string appearance in which the DNA enters and leaves the nucleosomes at random places. Here you can see the formation of a beads on a string appearance where there is deficiency of H1 protein. H1 of one nucleosome can interact with H1 of the neighboring nucleosome resulting in further folding of the fiber. Here you can see that a octomere is around 10 nanometer and they are linked by the H1 histone proteins and these octomere along with the DNA spiral forms the nucleosome. All this nucleosome join together to form a solenoid which is around 30 nanometers. The chromatin fiber in the interface nuclei and the mitotic chromosomes have a diameter that vary between 200 to 300 nanometers and represents the inactive chromatin. 30 nanometer fiber arises from the folding of a nucleosome chains forming a solenoid structure having six nucleosomes per turn. Here you can see the six nucleosomes. Each nucleosome has a histone octomer wound by a DNA and they are linked by H1 linker protein. And the size of the solenoid is around 30 nanometers. So the solenoid model of the nucleosome arrangement results in the formation of the chromatin fiber. This packaging of the nucleosome into a solenoid is called the second level of packaging. And the solenoid second level of packaging was proposed by Finch and Kluck where six nucleosomes together forms the solenoid and the diameter of this solenoid is around 30 nanometers. H1 histone stabilizes the structure of the solenoid. Solenoid structure is stabilized by the interaction between different H1 molecules. DNA is a solenoid and packed about 40 folds. Here you can see the formation of a solenoid chromatin fiber after the packaging. Now to sum up the DNA double helix structure the thickness is around 2 nanometers. The DNA double helix structure is made into a nucleosomes. Nucleosomes consist of an octomere with two turns of the DNA. The size of this nucleosome is around 11 nanometers. These nucleosomes about six in number join together to form solenoids. Multiple solenoids are formed. The thickness of this solenoid structure is around 30 nanometer called the chromatin. And these chromatin form the chromatin loops and the thickness of these chromatin loops is around 300 nanometers. And these chromatin loops are condensed to form multiple chromatin loops and the thickness of these chromatin loops is around 700 nanometers. These condensed chromatin loops are formed and organized into a chromosome and the thickness of the chromosome is around 1400 nanometers. To sum up you can see here that the DNA helix molecule which is around 2 nanometers is wrapped around the histone core which is an octomere and they form a chromatosome and the chromatosomes are linked by histone H1 and the thickness of this nucleosome is around 11 nanometers and these 
nucleosome joined together to form a solenoid the thickness of which is 30 nanometers and again they are just made into loops which are about 300 nanometers and the distance between the two loops is about 250 nanometers and they are closely packed in such a way that the thickness becomes 700 nanometers forming the chromatin heavy loops and these heavy loops are joined together to form the chromosome. Now coming to the non-histone chromosomal proteins. Additional set of proteins are required for packaging of the chromatin at a higher level and are referred to as non-histone chromosomal proteins otherwise NHC. What are the differences between the histone protein and a non-histone protein? The histone protein, a family of basic proteins, is associated with the DNA in the nucleus condensing the DNA into chromatin whereas the non-histone protein remains after the histones have been removed and used in the packaging of the DNA. Five types are present of histone protein H1, H2A, H2B, H3 and H4 whereas non-histone proteins are called scaffold proteins. Heterochromatin protein 1, polycomb and DNA polymerase. Histone protein is a highly conserved type of proteins across the species whereas non-histone protein is less conserved across species. Helps to package DNA into nucleosomes whereas non-histone proteins plays a role in the functions related to DNA. What is euchromatin? In a typical nucleus some regions of the chromatin are loosely packed. They are lightly stained and these regions are referred to as euchromatin. What is heterochromatin? The chromatin that is tightly packed, stained darkly, is called heterochromatin. Here you can see the nucleus which shows lightly stained regions called the euchromatin and a darkly stained regions called the heterochromatin. Euchromatin is transcriptionally active and heterochromatin is transcriptionally inactive. Heterochromatin versus euchromatin Heterochromatin DNA is generally not very active. In interface, this type of chromatin are compact. Heterochromatin also has long stretches of repeat sequences called satellite DNA. Euchromatin is generally more active. In interface, they are generally not condensed. Here you can see the orange colored regions inside the heterochromatin. The orange colored regions indicate the heterochromatin and the other regions euchromatin. Now what are the differences between the heterochromatin and the euchromatin? Heterochromatin represents darkly stained regions. Euchromatin are lightly stained regions. Heterochromatin contains few inactive genes whereas euchromatin contains lot of active genes. Heterochromatin covers small region of the chromosome. Euchromatin larger region of the chromosome usually found near centromere and telomere found in the middle of the chromosome between centromere and telomere. Two types are there in heterochromatin, constitute and facultative. In euchromatin only one type is present. Heterochromatin is a late replicating, whereas euchromatin is normal replicating. Heterochromatin usually no active part in transcription and 8.30 nanometer fiber, whereas in a euchromatin it plays an active role in the transcription and 8.3 to 8 nanometer fiber. So today we discuss in molecular genetics part 3 the properties of genetic material and how the DNA helix is packed to fit into the nucleus. Thank you. Kindly subscribe, like, share and comment to channel Read Med Prep Academy. Log on to www.readmedprepacademy.com. Our Facebook ID is Read Med Prep Academy. Our email is readmedprepacademy at gmail.com. Kindly post your questions in the comment box. We shall reply with appropriate answers. Thank you very much.